Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, Wednesday morning, and I am on my way to work. I am coming from Vallejo and going to San Carlos for work. So, most of you know me as a sneakerhead. There are some of you out there who know me personally. And I have some family that watches this channel as well. So, this video, by the way, is not really sneaker related. I think I'm going to start a new series here, basically giving you all who know me, don't know me, think you know me, want to know me, don't want to know me, love me, hate me, indifferent, whatever. So. I guess you can call this video kind of just clearing things up in a way. There was a comment on one of my last videos from one of you viewers out there, which I appreciate the comments, but I'm going to respond to this comment here. The comment was something along the lines of, I'm assuming, no, I'm quoting, I'm assuming all sneakerheads slash hype beasts live with their parents, or something along that line, unquote. Well, assuming is a bad thing to do regardless of what you're assuming but when you're wrong or as wrong as that comment is it's a very ignorant thing to say nobody out there except in my personal life knows my particular situation so this series of videos that I'm going to be putting out that are not going to be sneaker related, I guess you could say have somewhat been sparked by that comment, along with comments and things I'm hearing about throughout the world of Facebook, however important that is. But again, social media is social media, and people who don't know and think they know make themselves sound incredibly ignorant about whatever it is they're talking about I've noticed my subscribers going up on this channel so I've decided also that I want to give all of you some insight as to who I am what I am and how I came to be. I know I don't have to explain myself to anyone. And I shouldn't really care who says what about me. Thinks or whatever. But then on the, on the flip side of things. You don't want people think. Well personally I don't want people thinking incorrectly about me. I would like to give people facts and they can take those facts and decide how they feel about me or think about me or whatever. So here we go. You guys are about to embark on a story with me and I'm basically going to give you the journey of my life from June 30th, 1978, when I was born, up till today. For, 
for those of you that stick along with this series, I appreciate it. For those of you that don't care, I also appreciate it. All I care about is hoping that you guys will subscribe to the channel, like the videos, or, or dislike the videos, comment, interact, communicate, all that fun stuff. And maybe, just maybe, once you actually get to know me as much as you can over a camera and a YouTube video, you can then decide how you feel about me or don't feel or think. Okay. So... I was born June 30th, 1978, in Palo Alto, California. I have always been told by my mom, who is probably going to see this video, and this will probably upset her, and I apologize, but as the saying goes, it is what it is. So here we go. I love you, by the way, Mom, so please don't think that I don't. I have been told from a young child, as far back as I can remember, jokingly in a way, but also she was serious, that I was a mistake. I was never even supposed to be. I wasn't wanted from the get-go. My dad who will probably see this video as well. And I love you too, Dad, but we're, we're, we're just airing out some things here because of some stuff that's been going on. So, my dad used the same rubber three times in one night on a beach with my mom. And here I am. Uh, I was born over stupidity. So, and then for the first six months of my life, again, I've been told this throughout the course of my life, and have heard this story over and over again, that when my mom found out she was pregnant, she wanted a girl. And she wanted a girl so much so that I wore girls' baby clothes for the first six months of my life. So, I wasn't wanted from the get-go. And then, when I was... Um, I don't even know how to say it. When I was... When, they, when my mom accepted that she was having a kid, she decided she wanted a girl. Well, she didn't get that either. So, I was a double disappointment right from the beginning and I've been told so not in those words but I've been told so a lot in my life so that's how it started and when I was so from the age of born up until five it was just my me and me and my mom because from as far as I know and can gather from what I've been told, my father left basically when he found out my mom was pregnant with me and he wasn't around very much at all throughout the course of my life, sporadically at best, we'll say. Today we are better, but that's something for a different video later on in this series. So, my dad left when my mom, my mom got pregnant. They got divorced. They were divorced six months after getting married when she got pregnant with me. So, he really wanted nothing to do with me. I, like, scared him off or whatever the case was. So, from... 
newborn to five years old, it was just me and my mom and my grandma and my uncle. Have no brothers, no sisters at this point that I knew about. Just me, my mom, my grandma, and my uncle, and my grandparents. At five years old, my mom met a guy. And his name was Glenn. I was five years old, so I'm going on sporadic memories, but some of them are vivid. He was... We, we moved... We were living at my grandmother's house. So we were all in my grandma's... One of my grandma's rooms. Very tight, close quarters and, you know, in a bedroom. It didn't take very long in the relationship of my mom and my stepdad, Glenn, before things became erratic and violent. There was... My stepdad was a heavy drug user, and my mom partied right alongside of him when they got together. Most of what I remember of their relationship is violence. I used to watch him throw things through windows, break glass stuff on the walls like, like mirrors and whatever. We had a glass table that he broke the tabletop to. I watched him beat up my mom numerous times. I watched him throw a couch on top of my mom, and, I, and that was the time that I thought he killed her. Um, I think I was about six-ish when that happened. It was just a, a household full of violence. Drugs, violence, yelling, screaming. Thankfully, I wasn't the one he directed most of it to, but there were a few times where I was physically abused, assaulted as a child. Nothing sexual, nothing like that, just violent. Now I look at it like best way to describe it. I look at it like, so I kind of look at it like kids who grew up with the boogeyman in the closet, the, the boogeyman under the bed. Mine was the monster in the next room. Only thing was he was real. I was terrified growing up. I learned to not do certain things like with the toothpaste. If you didn't have the toothpaste rolled up from the bottom all the way to the top, all perfect, he would get violent. If I left any of my toys as a child in the living room or anywhere other than my room, he would get violent. It was something that at the time I thought was normal because it was just what I was living and I was six, seven, eight years old. But looking back on it now, as a parent, as a, a, an adult, as somebody who knows right from wrong, that's something, what I grew up in is something no child should ever have to go through. I see people every day that grew up in quote unquote normal households, no violence, you know, no craziness, no drugs, no, no, no wild stuff going on. And I can't even imagine what that was like. My grandma was my savior. She would always come and pick me up and keep me at her house on weekends and whenever she could, because she knew what was going on over there. She knew what I was around when I wasn't at her house, and she could keep me away from it. My grandma was my best friend. Um, 
so yeah from six years old until the age of 14 I lived in fear and violence going into my freshman year of high school 1992 summer of 1992 it's a typical summer in my house you know they would fight on the weekends arguing on the weekends I would do my very best to stay in my room when I wasn't with my grandma and I think on this particular weekend we're going to talk about I think I'd been already brought home by my mom because it was Sunday morning so I was either already brought home or I stayed at the house that particular weekend for whatever reason but on this Sunday morning, I believe it was, I'm 14, I'm sitting in my room, my desk, and I'm coloring, drawing, coloring, typical things a 14-year-old might be doing at 10 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. My mom and my stepdad were arguing that day, and I could hear it, but I had my door closed in my room. And I was just trying to keep to myself as usual, sitting there drawing. Well, randomly, my bedroom door flies open, slamming against the wall, making me jump in fear. And it's my stepdad, Glenn, barging into the room, beelining right towards me, and all I could do was freeze in fear because I had no idea what the hell was going on. He gets right in my face and proceeds to yell. And I'm, I'm sorry for the language. I try not to cuss on this channel because I know everybody can watch. But... You know to keep it real my stepdad looks me in the face directly and yells and at a very very high monsterish tone quote you are one fucked up little kid unquote turns around storms out of the room slam the, I think he left my door open I hear him stomp through the house to the kitchen I hear the door from the kitchen to the garage open and slam shut, and I heard the lock latch. So he had gone and stormed out to the garage and slammed it shut. Now we're in the in July or August of '92. And it was probably 100 degrees outside throughout the course of the day. It was hot, like hot, for where we live. And we hear nothing from him. It's dead silent in the garage. The doors never opened, the windows never opened, he never came back in the house. It was just quiet. And hours passed. Hours. At one point, my mom and I thought we heard something in the garage, like a crash or a bang, like something might have fallen over type of thing. Something fell off a shelf or off the washing machine on the ground, whatever. Something fell over onto the ground. Didn't sound like much of anything. So, I'm sorry, this is, this is a little hard to talk about, but again, you guys need to hear this, who don't already know this. 
half the day goes by. My mom finally calls. We were knocking on the garage door and went around to the back of the house. And I was thinking about, at 14 years old, thinking about kicking in the back door. But then I was like telling myself and my mom, if I kick in this back door and he's everything's okay, he's going to kill me for breaking the back door. So I'm not doing it. More hours go by, late in the afternoon, it's over 100 degrees. We know it's over 110, 120 in, that, in the garage with everything closed up the way it was. And my mom finally calls one of his friends who lived around the corner to come over and take the garage door, the door going from the kitchen to the garage, off the hinges so we could go out so we, have, we wouldn't break anything and we could make sure everything was okay he shows up he gets the, the the pins out the hinges out the screws off the door comes off and we go out in the garage and go down the steps and make the left turn to, to, the, to the garage and right there in our face was my stepdad. He had hung himself from the rafter above with a rope. The sound that we heard earlier in the day in the garage was the ladder that he used falling over when he hung himself. So at 14 years old, my dad, my dad, he was my dad at the time, had been, no matter how much of a monster he was, because my real dad just wasn't there. My stepdad hung himself after telling me how much of a messed up kid I was. And this was August, I believe, early August of 1992. I was, just came out of eighth grade, going into freshman year at high school. Wasn't easy. Um... My mom was completely devastated. And I honestly think and have always thought that I was more upset with myself because I was relieved that he was gone. I had to call 911 that day. My mom just collapsed or whatever. She was she was messed up. So at 14, I'm on the phone with 911 screaming. I remember I was sitting in the front yard out on Hudson Street in the middle of the yard screaming on the phone. That was two weeks before starting my freshman year at high school. No. Yeah, it was roughly, it was a few weeks before I started high school because we had his memorial service at the house. Like days before I started my freshman year at high school. So at 14 years old, starting high school, I'm dealing with fresh suicide in my life. I remember the first day at school, getting all my classes 
and going to all my classes for the first time. Well, actually, I, I take that back. I just remember the first class. Pardon me. The first class. It was my world studies class. And I remember first thing in the morning, I sat down at the desk, put my backpack on the back of my seat, sat down. And I had opened up a binder or my backpack to get my binder out, set my binder on the desk. And when I looked up at the chalkboard, all I could see was my stepfather hanging. And that slow kind of, because he had that real slow swing going. And he was probably only six inches off the ground like his feet were only six inches off the ground and when we found him he had drool one one solid strand of drool that went from his lip and was all the way at the ground still completely intact and that was all i could see on the chalkboard but i just kept quiet kept to myself and just went along my way my entire freshman year was a disaster it was rough I failed pretty bad um And no one can understand what my problem was. Well, my mom understood, obviously. But people who didn't know what had happened didn't understand. So freshman year was a disaster. I met my oldest daughter's mother my freshman year. Um. Went to summer school my freshman year into sophomore. And then once the sophomore year started, I, I just started cutting like every day. I think halfway through the year, I had some something ridiculous like 200 cuts or something like that. Like it was to a point where my mom was getting called from the school. And finally, finally, the, the counselors and, and you know, school administration pulled us in for a meeting. And I finally let it all out. I told them that when I was sitting in class, I could just see my stepdad swinging and hanging. And then when they, the school found out that my stepdad committed suicide two weeks before I started my freshman year, they took it upon themselves and made the decision to what they call exempt me from school due to trauma. Um, I was exempted from high school and went and got my GED. And throughout the course of this time, the girl I met my oldest daughter's mom and I were heavy, heavy, heavy. We were together. And at, when I was 15 and a half, she came to me and told me she was pregnant. Yeah. She was pregnant. scariest thing I ever heard in my life not even 16 years old can't even drive and I'm gonna have a baby all right everyone I think we're going to call this episode one and we're gonna leave it off with me finding out I was gonna be a dad I appreciate you guys. 
going on this journey with me if you choose to do so um i would appreciate if you'd subscribe to the channel i would love it show some support um yeah i'm gonna be doing this series once a week sitting down with you here while i drive to work one day during the week and we will do episode two next week hit that notification bell up there to the right of the name of this channel to be notified when this next episode drops my life could be made into a movie and it would be something that most people would walk away from with their jaws on the floor all right everybody i appreciate you being here have a great week i will be posting some sneaker content this week as well so watch out for that and once we hit that thousand subscribers i'm going to be doing a giveaway please comment below if you are interested interested in this new series i'm going to be doing or if i'm just wasting my time running my mouth because my brain never stops r.i.p chester beddington i feel you bro i really do in those songs you you, you were saying it for a long time and I couldn't really understand it back then but I do now love you Lincoln Park I am more in touch with you guys than you'll ever know at this point in my life so sorry okay everybody have a great week love each other let everybody you love know you love them. Be kind. And be safe. Peace out.